What's up YouTube? Dr. Kemp here, Hammond Doc once again. I'm talking about today uh, Hammond Tone Generator Bolts. And so I'm going to show you here on this organ. Here's a Hammond B2. Uh, this is uh, the back of the organ, of course. This is the Tone Generator here. And I, in, a, in the previous video, in a previous video, I showed you the tone uh, generator boats. Well, this is what the tone generator boats are used uh, to lock down. This tone generator here. Um, in fact, I can show you the boats under there. There's a set of boats. There are four of them. One here. That's an, there's another one over there. There. And there are two more underneath here as well. Okay? And uh, so when you move the Hammond organ, you want to make sure the tone generator is bolted down. If you do not bolt down the tone generator then what can happen is that these wires you see here can be snapped loose. Alright and so you, your organ will not play as it should. So these wires can be snapped or, you know, or these wires could be snapped loose and you end up having to Resolder them. Now, in the in the event that a wire snaps uh, back from its place, its location, its placement, that's easy to find. Okay, boom, you put it right back there. But if one is out of place, or, if, or several of them are out of place, you got a, several of them out of place, and you don't know exactly where they go, that can be a problem. And you may have to read a schematic or look at schematics to. To figure it out. Now, let's take a look at um, a B3. Here's my one of my B3s. I mean, my music room B3. We can look under here, and and you can see that um, there's one here. The second one here. Come over here. Third one. And the fourth one. Now you will notice some space there between the washer and the base of the organ. See that there's a space there, it's a little gap. Alright, that allows the tone generator freedom to move and so you have uh, you can in fact touch with your finger and it'll bounce like that because the tone generator is attached to springs so this is the way it should be when you have moved your organ into a permanent position now if the organ is going to be transported then you want it like this. This is an A100. This is, on, this is locked down. And that's the other lockdown over there. So this is locked down. Now I'm going to show you something else. It's important to note. Let me get up. Because I want you to see this. When you're using, when you're uh, boats for a B3, you can use this type of washer for the Hammond B3. Okay? But when you have a, uh, an A100, 
you want to use this type. Let's see. The reason is, is that the A100 has the area underneath the organ where the speakers are located and this part fits up against that board, that baseboard where the speakers are located and it, and it fits flush like this or like this. If you use these on a Hammond A100 then the round edge will cut into the cloth Okay, so I'll take the camera off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll bring it down here. I'll show you what I mean. If you use the round type like this here, it'll cut right into this cloth here. So you don't want to use the round type on an A100. You want to use this one with the flat end so that that flat end can fit right up against it and not cut into your cloth of this this material here you don't want that you do not want this damaged now I'll give you I'll show you some damage has occurred because someone used um, probably the uh, more than likely the wrong washer at one point I changed them, I changed them out once I purchased this organ but you can see a little worn area in the cloth here got to lay down so I can maneuver so I can show you what I'm talking about change the lighting if you look right here this is a little worn area, if you can see it. Let me pull up, pan up. Okay, right there. It's worn because someone used a rounded washer instead of the washer with the flat side to it. Of course, as I stated, I put the correct washer on here. Okay? But this is the damage that occurs when you use the rounded washer on the A100 organ. All right? All right. Is getting down in the trenches <laughs> is something else. That's all right. I don't mind doing it. Okay. See if I can get this camera back on here. Here I am. I think uh, that pretty much takes care of what I want to talk about with regard to the T boats that go into the Hammond tone generator and hopefully I've answered any questions questions that you might have have you might have or have had regarding tone generator boats. Um, I did say in a other video uh, that you use a 5 16th wrench boxed in wrench, a box wrench to remove and to screw in these particular bolts. This is a very valuable tool to have. If you're ever going to, if you ever purchase a Hammond organ from someone, um, it's very important and because you, you never know, you know, people you, you, don't, you don't know. When I've, I've purchased a lot of Hammond organs over the years. And sometimes they had the boats in them, and sometimes they did not. Um, so, you, and you nev so you never know whether the person is going to have these boats in their organ or not when you're, going, when you're going to buy an organ. 
So it's, um, it's, it would be very good practice if you're going to buy a Hammond organ or buy a Hammond organ that you get your set of these boats or ask the person, do, do they have, ask when you buy the organ, are tone generator boats already installed underneath the Hammond organ? And hopefully they can, they can answer that question for you. If there are no tone generator boats in the Hampton Oregon, then you need to get you a set of these boats and washers. Four. You need four of them. Before you transport your newly acquired or purchased Hammond B3 organ or C3 organ or A100 organ uh, to the location that you're planning on uh, moving it to so that you want to rip the wires away from the uh, their proper location okay all right that's enough for today again this is Hammond Doc saying to you peace out